All right, so I've done some polishing and slickening up of this action. Uh, this is the Marlin, Marlin 30AS. First thing, I took the sugar plate off and adjusted some of the springs in here, I'm bending them up to relieve some of the tension that they offer. So now on the initial downstroke of the lever, um, this trigger disconnect spring here is much easier to, to uh, engage. I can press it in my finger, but it still has enough tension to come back out safely. And so when I press it in, it just goes right in. I also adjusted the, uh, the trigger spring, so that has reduced the trigger pull. So I'll talk to you about that at the very end. Um, this plunger here that helps lock the, lock the action. One thing that I didn't get to do was punch out this pin and um, adjust the uh, plunger here, polishing and cutting coil out the spring. Uh, just because I don't have the proper punch size. What I did was I just put one drop of oil in here and worked it in. So the hydraulic effect uh, got the oil down to the base. I found that that's already helped a lot in terms of just smoothing out um, the closing of the action. Okay, so that's the initial opening of the action. And then as you can see, the second point of resistance is when this rear bolt hits the hammer here and cocking it backwards. That once you clear that, then it's fine. I'll talk about that on the, on the closing of the action. Okay, so now we're at the closing of the action. The first initial resistance is the ejector that um, needs to be uh, compressed by the bolt as it slides forward. And what I did was I took the bolt out and as you can see in the light here, there are a lot of high spots on the ejector groove of the bolt. So I took some sandpaper and just smoothed that all out. I didn't go crazy and just flatten everything. Um, I just wanted to get rid of the high spots and polish it up with some fine grit, um, allowing this to ride smoothly. Put one drop of oil and let it slide in work the action and that's gotten uh, the interior lubricated as well as some lubrication on the injector there so it's already a lot better than it was in my original video if you go back and look okay so the second point of um, resistance on the rear wood stroke of the lever is again uh, the hammer riding on the underside of the bolt here so um, what you can see is there's actually wear here on this top of the uh, hammer. So I put a drop of oil there just to see if it improve, and it does. So now I'm considering maybe um, just putting like a, a dab of grease up here. And so it'll kind of spread to the underside of the bolt. And I don't think that's gonna affect too much of the the action or cause any jamming just because uh, this, this rear portion of the bolt and the hammer don't really feed too much into the interior of the gun. Um, just to note that you don't want to put any oil or grease on the hammer face here so it doesn't start clogging up the firing pin, as you can see there. And lastly, um, this factory hammer spring, I just put a couple of dabs of oil and worked the hammer back and forth. And um, I think that's helped a lot in terms of just smoothing out the pull. Now getting back to the pull, I found that it's much improved now. So... A lot better than it was in my first video so this is one finger only i would say that the poles dropped by about a pound to a pound and a half um, it's still heavy because this is my trigger finger just holding the rifle all up by itself the buttstock's not on but i think but the rest of this rifle is probably about six six pounds but if i now just lift my finger lightly slightly the trigger will go off. So already it's already improved and the trigger is pretty predictable because it's um, there's no take up, it's just the loose uh, Marlin trigger. You press and then it goes. So that's already a lot more uh, workable. And the last thing I did was I took the, uh, the scope off. The gun was like seven and seven and a half pounds with that four power scope and it just made this gun very unwieldy, especially given that these carbines are meant for you know, bush guns, brush guns, uh, dense timber. So I took the scope off. Um, it was a cheap Tasco for power that came with it um, from the factory and took the aluminum Tasco base off. So I'm going to probably put a, a Skinner peep sight back here and uh, run it with the factory uh, kind of bead sight there. And we'll go from there. All right. So, um, Next steps are to reload some 150 grain uh, um, 
hand loads for this and see how it prints. Thanks for watching.